cholera epidemic in Nigeria for 19 years has spread to Cameroon, Chad and Niger, where hundreds have died so far. Millions of Nigerians lack access to clean water, which is damaging efforts made by the government to try and contain the disease. Sky's Sophie Garrett reports. If untreated, these children may die. They desperately need rehydration to fight the severe sickness and diarrhea that cholera causes. The disease comes from contaminated water. Those living with poor sanitation are most at risk. Cholera robs its victims of time. There's little hope as soon as the symptoms are noticed. Despite limited access to clean water, Al Haji Gaba has so far avoided infection. His son, Halaru, wasn't so lucky. Around 11 p.m. we were talking inside his house. He was telling us about his sickness. He was given salt water. As the day broke, the next day he was admitted to hospital. He stayed one day in the hospital, and two days later, he died. The Nigerian government is struggling to contain the outbreak, which has killed around 800 of its people in the past two months and many more in neighbouring countries. Without uh, enlightenment, without taking care of the infected, definitely things will get worse. But as we are now embarking into this exercise, and the government is putting a strong effort to make sure uh, the supply drugs and then the needed chlorine, and uh, at our own level we will continue to accelerate in social mobilisation, enlightening our people. It's a race to fight the spread of infections, and with half of the country's population lacking access to clean drinking water, there are fears the outbreak will worsen. Sophie Garrett, Sky News. Time for an update on all the African business news. Let's cross to Summit TV. Hello and welcome to Summit TV. I'm Teresa Arlo with a look at what's making business news on the African continent. Starting off in Uganda, where Talo's oil exploration license for an oil field in western Uganda has been withdrawn. Uganda's authority says the group failed to renew it. The license is for Block 3A. That's where some of the country's largest oil finds have been realized. Talo says it's still in talks with government and is hoping for a positive response. But the group is still in a dispute with tax authorities there. Uganda's government approved the $1.45 billion sale of its assets, but that was on condition that it paid 30% of a $405 million capital gains tax and submit to arbitration for the balance. Media group NASPAS has won a mobile TV license in its home market, South Africa. That's only the second mobile license to be issued in the country. NASPAS, which operates mobile TV in Namibia, Kenya and Nigeria, has been given 12 months by the regulator to launch services in South Africa. NASPAS is Africa's biggest media company. It owns a string of big newspapers in South Africa, as well as a network which broadcasts Sky in South Africa. It also operates mobile TV in Namibia, Kenya and Nigeria and has a presence in Greece, Cyprus, the Netherlands, the United States, Thailand, China and Brazil. South African brokerage firm BJM is to cancel a planned special dividend. BJM, which was recently acquired by SA lender First Rand, was to sell its UK and US units to India's Relegar Enterprises. It was to use some of that to pay out a 22 cents per share dividend. But it says it's become aware of circumstances that could affect the proceeds from its US business. It's not saying what, only that it's investigating. And taking a look at news in brief, China Petrochemical Corp, the nation's second biggest energy company, will join the bidding for 42 offshore exploration blocks off Gabon. That's according to Reuters. Senegal's economy is expected to grow by 4% in 2010 and 4.4% next year, led by expansion in petroleum refining and cement production, the country's statistical agency said. And Kenya will soon include coffee and cut flowers to the list of export products to China, in a bid to reduce the current trade imbalance between the two countries. I'm Teresa Arlo and that's the African Business News Roundup from Johannesburg.
Southern Africa will be mostly fine and dry and a wind from the interior means Cape Town will be quite warm but central Mozambique will have a lot of cloud while coastal Tanzania and Zanzibar can expect a shower or two. To the east Madagascar will be mostly fine as well although there will be a few showers in the northeast whereas the Seychelles will be showery. The equatorial region, meanwhile, will see widespread heavy showers, which will extend south into northern Angola and the Democratic Republic of Congo. But Somalia will be mainly dry again. There will be just a few showers there around the Gulf of Aden. Well, this is Sky World News. Do remember to check out our website too, skynews.com. It's a bargain. Our cardinal friend of the Pope says the pontiff's UK visit is well worth it. And coming up, Ahmadinejad's delight. Iran finally gets the piece of history it's been fighting for. More than four million fans in the UK. First tour in 28 years. Glasgow, London, Birmingham. The Pope is coming. Live coverage on Sky News HD. The International Herald Tribune reports that the increase in U.S. forces in Afghanistan has led to a rise in violence against troops. Spain's El Pais has Formula One driver Fernando Alonso after his victory at the Grand Prix in Monza. Germany's Frankfurt Allgemeine shows French film director Claude Chabol, who died at the weekend. The civil rights activist Barbel Boli, who lost her battle with cancer at age 65, is on the front of the Berliner Zeitung. Britain's Telegraph says inflicting deep spending cuts on the country's armed forces could harm the relationship between Britain and the US. The new deal reached by global financial regulators to try to prevent another economic crisis is the lead in the Financial Times. La Repubblica has news of protests at the start of the school year in Italy. Sports headlines. Rain has forced the postponement of the US Open men's tennis final to Monday for the third year in a row. Tournament organisers waited about two hours beyond the scheduled start time before calling off play for the day. Good news for Novak Djokovic, giving him an extra day's rest after his tough five-set semi-final win over Roger Federer. He will play top seed Rafael Nadal in the final. Fernando Alonso won Formula One's Italian Grand Prix. Jensen Button was second, Felipe Massa third. Championship leader Lewis Hamilton crashed out on the first lap. Oh, England won the second one-day international against Pakistan by four wickets with just three balls to spare, chasing down 295 to win. And Dustin Johnson put prior final round disappointments behind him to win the BMW Championship in Chicago on the US PGA Tour. He finished nine out for the tournament, one ahead of Paul Casey. Thanks very much for that. Well, this is Sky World News. Still to come, back for a good cause. Robbie Williams and Gary Barlow performed together for the first time in 15 years. Graham, thanks very much for that. Now, Robbie Williams and Gary Barlow have performed on stage together for the first time since Take That Split. It was at a charity gig to support the armed forces. Soldiers were amongst 60,000 people at Twickenham Stadium to watch the star-studded Help for Heroes event. Sky's Juliana Needham has more. To you, Mr. Gary Barlow. On stage together for the first time in 15 years, the headline performance of the night came from Robbie Williams and Gary Barlow. The 60,000 strong crowd were here to enjoy the music and raise money for injured service men and women. It's nice to see you, to see you. Earlier in the day, the stars came out while the sun was still right, shining. performing for free.
I'm really pleased to be here. I, I wanted to join the army when I was 17. Among them, the housewife's favourite, Sir Tom Jones. I was born in 1940, in the Second World War. And if it wasn't for the heroes then, I wouldn't be standing here now. So I've always been very much aware of, and so as my family, you know, I come from, uh, my grandfather was a, a company sergeant major, Royal Engineers, so it's, you know, we've always, uh, always felt like that. The Saturdays were also keen to lend their support, but for slightly different reasons. We're, we're girls. Men in uniform, yeah, we, we couldn't resist. Men. Yeah, not forgetting the women either as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the concert was organised by Help for Heroes. In the three years since the charity was set up, it's raised £61 million. I'm overwhelmed with support. I mean, this has become so much bigger than we ever thought. But it's all, got, all that support has now got to translate into money and then into facilities and, and physical support. And it's got to keep going for years because we've got to be able to get enough money to look after these guys way into the future when all the uh, excitement of tonight has died down. In the crowd at Twickenham Stadium were plenty of former soldiers. It's unusual for obviously the military to get this much publicity and so it'll do do us some good and hopefully it's everybody will enjoy so many people coming out to support us yeah. as well and hopefully they'll enjoy it loads of people outside to be honest and they're all here for the cause they all want to help us and it's brilliant to see yeah So while much of the attention was on Robbie and Gary, the real heroes of the night weren't on stage, but in the audience. Juliana Needham, Sky News in Twickenham. Well, this is Sky World News. Let's take another look at some of our top stories this morning.